Welcome to the leopard tutorial with me, Emily Rose. I'm a professional wildlife and pastel pencil artist. Um, in this video, I'm going to take you through quickly the process for drawing this absolutely stunning leopard portrait. So this is um, an online paid for tutorial, like the full lesson is many hours long. Um, but here you can see the whole process and yeah, I'm going to talk you through some of the key elements. So if you haven't used pastel pencils before, they are a brilliant medium medium for wildlife because pastel, as you might know, is very, very soft. Um, so it blends together really well. It has this kind of matte quality when it's finished. It's of course not a shiny um, medium and it therefore creates the feel and the look of fur. So it really does half of the job for us when it comes to wildlife. You can see here, I'm getting a bit of a shine um, onto the eye and I'm doing that by mixing soft and hard edges. So I've got the soft edges, those transitions inside the eye for the um, almost blue green iris um, and then some very crisp edges um, on the reflection. And just a note, um, when you're drawing eyes, really study the reflection. It's not always pure white and I'll often mix um, greys into that before putting a speck of white on. Sometimes white is just a little bit too harsh and the difference between the darker the pupil and the light of your reflection can sometimes be too much and it won't look real. So that's to do with tone and to be honest, it could go down an entire rabbit hole on that. Um, but what I'm doing at the minute, carrying on the theme of tone, um, I'm just going around and I'm, I'm kind of mapping out my way through the drawing. Being that she's got such a complex pattern um, on her fur, it's really important that I make sure I've got the tonal structure correct underneath. So, so tone is light and dark. And you can see here, I'm going in for the shadows first and you'll see me adjusting them for quite a while. The reason the pattern makes it difficult is because of course it's there to camouflage her um, out in the wild but for us it camouflages the shape and form of her body so it can be very easy to end up with a flat drawing um, and a flat pack leopard with a beautiful pattern but absolutely no shape or volume to the body which would be a total waste of time for this piece of art. So I always start by picking out my most important tones. They could be light and in this case I'm going for the darks and I leave myself soft edges so that I can adjust those quite easily later on. So what I'm trying to do now, um, I'm picking out the mid-tones. Um, so mid-tone is between your darkest dark and your lightest light. I'm basically trying to give myself a bit of structure. Because of that complex pattern, we do end up with a lot of empty space while we're working and it can be really tricky uh, to see how the form, that is the, the roundness, is coming together. So I'm hopping around, you can see it's left very messy. Most underpaintings are very messy, they shouldn't be neat or pretty or particularly impressive to be honest um, but hopefully if you squint at them um, they should have an accuracy to them so that you can tell the overall shape and it has a weight and a mass to it and if you've got that then you've got a pretty good underpainting to be honest. So some people ask me um, what pencils I'm using. You'll find linked down below a link to a free pencil guide and it's just got my um, kind of perfect beginner's guide uh, to, to pastel pencils in it. So I recommend the brand I'm using at the minute. I'm not sponsored by any of these, it's just my personal preference. But uh, the Favour Castell uh, Pit Pastel Pencils, they're a really good bet because they provide brilliant colours for wildlife. They have lots of browns and greys um, and a lot of desaturated, so less colourful colours that you can mix with them. Um, but more importantly for me, they are good for this stage. They're good for the underpainting. They are soft enough to get those transitions and I layer them up lightly. Um, but they're also hard enough that I can go over the top and I can get those all important details. So they're a really good bet if you're just starting out. Uh, but also in that guide, I've got a couple of rogue pencils, um, which you can actually see on the screen at the minute. So one of them is a Creta color, uh, yellow gray, which I think I pick up in a moment. Um, and that pencil is so useful. I use it in pretty much all of my tutorials actually. Um, it's just a very, very soft uh, mid, that's it, mid to light gray. And um, I'm using on the muzzle here. 
Um, the Creta Color pencils um, can be very brittle, so they do break quite easily. I tend to order a few at once, but they do have a few colors that I really love. So in that guide, you'll also find the Bista, which I've already used on the leopard actually. And again, that's another one that can break fairly often. Um, and you'll also find a, a few, I think, in the guide from Stabilo as well, which I've used on the muzzle. Um, so I use a an ivory from Stabilo that I quite like, but I also use one of their blues. I find that blue pigment is particularly unstable in the pastel pencils, but Stabilo seem to have a pretty good mix. So the pastel lasts much longer and it's got a really good amount of color to it. So when I'm doing underpaintings, I try not to get too hung up into details. You can see here around the chin, I just started to um, pull it together a little bit too much so I'm just moving along. What I'm conscious of as I'm working on any piece is that I'm always moving around or have a um, in my head an idea of the bigger picture and that again comes back to the idea of tone. It's just making sure that the whole piece will work all together at the end. If you focus on one area and totally neglect the other or don't, um, don't even consider the rest of your drawing you can find that you go too light or too dark in one area in particular particular and you can't get it to fit into the rest of your work. Um, so you've really got to just think about that and I find the easiest way to do it is to apply your underpainting um, over the entire drawing to start with. Lots of people work in different ways um, but certainly for starting out this is a, a fairly easy way and a fairly logical way to um, create your work. You'll see me come back to um, the whisker follicles, those spots that I just put on and in fact all of the black spots. There is a lot of work in this. You'll see me come back to those later on just to make sure that they sit in with the rest of the colors and the tones nice and easily for me. I do remember my hand getting very sore doing this. <laughs> it took quite a long time. Um, it was a labor of love and I've got to say it was, it was so worth it. Um, I'm working on the pastel matte paper for this and I did that for two reasons. Firstly, she has short fur. So the short fur means I'm not gonna need to put on quite so many layers, but also <laughs> to save myself a little bit of work. So if I picked the board, the board has a deeper tooth to it, which means it can actually hold on to more pastel. Um, and that would mean I'd need to put a lot more pastel down to fill it in. So <laughs> the grip on the pencil here is not my usual grip. My hand was quite sore by this point and I, I wasn't even halfway through all of those black spots. Um, so I filmed this over several days, as I say, the, the actual video, which has all of the footage and of course lots of um, tips and ex explanations um, throughout it is, um, is several hours long. Just, just so that no stone is left unturned really. So I'm explaining the theory and the technique as I go that I've cut out for the YouTube. Lots of hand waving as I'm explaining things. Um, I'm a big fan of hand movements. So these patterns here on the side of her, her rib cage are so important. So they are foreshortened, which just means that we're looking at them from the side and they appear a little bit squished, but they are describing the barrel shape um, of her rib cage. So if we don't get the correct foreshortening on them, um, she in fact won't look the correct shape by the end. It's going to disrupt the volume um, of her body. So you can trace those if you want to. Um, I freehanded actually a lot of those at, at the bottom. Um, but of course I was looking all the time at the reference photo. So I always work from a reference photo um, because trying to guess and um, trying to approximate your tones and your colors is extremely difficult if you're going for absolute realism. So I believe this pencil I'm using, yeah, I'm using now, it's the Stabilo Ivory. It's um, it's softer than the Faber-Castell. And the reason I picked it is because of that softness, it actually shows up a little bit more easily. I will have to sharpen it quite a bit more, um, but it sits on top of the underpainting nicely. It's got a really beautiful amount of pigment and it's actually a very nice pencil to work with. I, I really enjoy working with that pencil. So I have a full set of the Faber-Castell and then I just have lots of random ones really that um, pepper the spaces. So you'll find that Faber-Castell don't do all of the colors that you need, or all of the tones that you need, just as any brand can't. They haven't got hundreds and hundreds of pencils. So I just shop around and then find one that fits the gap. So that yellow gray from Creta Color is a really useful gray because it it stops the gap between the mid gray and the light gray in the Faber-Castell set, and I find it extremely useful. So I'm using another Creta color pencil here, um, the Ochre Light, which is in the free guide that's linked below this video. Um, 
This doesn't break quite as easily as the other ones, but it's a really useful yellow because it's a little bit more mellow than the yellows that you have from the Faber-Castell range. It's got more white mixed into it. Um, so although it's yellow, it's actually desaturated. Mixing white desaturates things just as much as mixing a gray or a black does. It just means there's less color. So the ratio of color is decreased in that. Um, in that pencil and it makes the yellow really good for realism because obviously it's not buttercup. So I can mix that in between the ivory quite happily. Um, it'll add a bit of saturation to her fur without turning her into a cartoon. So here I got a bit ahead of myself and started putting a few um, flicks on her beard. And again, in the ear, I quite like to finish off a few bits as I go through because the areas come together so easily and then they look so good. So I'm just flicking out some fine hairs and I can always go back to those at the end and touch them up um, as you go along. But you want to make sure you've got a nice sharp pencil, of course, for any detail like that. So here I am using um, one of the Faber-Castell yellows and you can see it appears really quite yellow, a bit too yellow, but I've used this yellow to start with because the ochre light that I was describing earlier and using on her face is, as the name suggests, quite light. And for this area of her body, I needed a richer, deeper golden color, certainly poking through um, between the light hairs that are going to go on top. So I'm mixing all of those colors. I'm not entirely covering up uh, the underpainting beneath it. I'm mixing and blending them together. And we're getting this really beautiful, warm, rich, golden color. Um, and it's not perfectly even because of course I'm keeping in mind that we are doing fur and then you can see over the top I go in with the um, ochre light but I'm allowing the underpainting to poke through so that some deeper um, tones appear and we get that lovely warmth as well and you can see some hand explaining going on there as I'm probably explaining the fur direction and the way the fur needs to fall over the form again to help the roundness it was the roundness throughout that was key to this drawing and the most challenging part of it. Um, so this is an advanced tutorial. I've got tutorials from an absolute beginner, someone who's not picked up a pencil, um, all the way through to things like this are more advanced. Um, so that there's something, something everyone can actually achieve and you can get a good result from them as well. I've got to say that is the nice thing about pastel pencils. Um, they are really easy to pick up and just get working with and you can have a beautiful painting within a day. Obviously something like this will take you a little bit longer, um, but you can do some, some really great things with them. So here, this was a key part of the portrait and it was a tricky bit for me because we've got a beautiful light on the side of her rib cage, but if I make it too bright, it's actually going to um, distract from her face. And that's something you've just got to think about when you're drawing, where is the main focal area? You can have secondary areas, of course, but you've got to think about the main focus. Where is that going to be? And if you make another area too dramatic, it's going to draw your eye. And of course, I don't really want people staring at the side of her rib cage. I want them to look at that eye first and look at her face before you explore the rest of the drawing. So here I'm going in just carefully with a bit more ivory. You can see I'm working carefully on the side um, of her rib cage there but I will keep it just a little bit softer than her face. Um, I've mixed other colors in just to make sure that the yellow isn't too pronounced. Now, this really was a labor of love. Having done all of those layers, I then needed to go back through every single spot of black needed touching up. You'll find that when you work on anything, the pastel dust um, will settle. And if you've got something that needs to be jet black or pure white, it will need touching up at the end. Um, it will have gone a little bit dull, uh, a little bit gray. So here I go across every single part of the pattern and really make sure I've properly filled in the tooth of the card. And it's that that's going to help with the professional finish. So you can see again, I've just retouched some of the white areas on her face. If you want to know about how to do um, whiskers, I've got a free tutorial for that here on YouTube. I uh, know that is something that people struggle with because you need quite a little bit of confidence to go in and add that final aspect to your drawing. And it's not very easy to rub them out, but I do go through the best ways to fix um, broken whiskers, if you like. So here we are. This is the finished um, leopard portrait. This is done in pastel pencils. You can find a link to the full video below with 20% off as well for all YouTube watchers. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I've got more videos on YouTube, including a tiger tutorial. Hope to see you soon.